The Four Sword Judgments of Ezekiel 14. This is part six of the Babylonian Captivity series. We've been looking through the Babylonian Captivity and we see it's a historical event where Judah and Jerusalem was destroyed and, and Judah was taken into captivity. But we also saw in previous videos, which I'll tag on this slide, that it's symbolic. It's symbolic of the end time church during the Great Tribulation. And there's three main features that caused this desolation or this trouble during the Babylon captivity. There was people that were taken captive, which is a, was a picture of Satan and his ministers that take over the church, scattering the disunity because there's confusion, there's false teaching in the church, there's free will gospels, there's false prophecy about the end time. It causes disunity in the church and we see that all around us today. The third one which we're going to look at today is famine, evil beasts, sword and pestilence. These are the judgments of God that come upon the corporate church, the people that, that call themselves Christian. Only a small percentage of those are Christian, or which are called the remnant. But it's the condition of the church during the Great Tribulation. We're close approaching that time. Uh, it's important to really consider this topic. Please consider subscribing to this channel. Uh, there's a little red button in the bottom right-hand corner, and we'll move on with our study. Thank you. Okay, so the four sword judgments of Ezekiel 14, we mentioned them already, famine, evil beast, sword, and pestilence. And in this passage, there's a pattern that, 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 that God says that uh, the land has sinned against him by trespassing grievously. And elsewhere, we know it's the worship of other gods and idols, disobedience to the word of God. And God was brought four sword judgments against the, the land of Judah. Famine, evil beast, sword, and pestilence. And he, in each of these repetitions in this passage for each of these four judgments, uh, we find a sentence that says, Though these three men, Noah, Daniel, and Job, were in it, they should deliver but their own souls by their righteousness, says the Lord God. And they represent the remnant. There's true believers, true Christians that exist in the church today that are caught up in this situation. It's going to be called the Great Tribulation. And it's going to go through this time period of famine, evil beast, sword, and pestilence. Uh, so we're going to go on and look at what that all spiritually means. Okay, so let's look at the result of the four sore judgments. Ezekiel 14, 21, For thus says the Lord God, How much more when I send my four sore judgments upon Jerusalem? And Jerusalem is a type, it's a picture, portrait of the church. And the four sore judgments, sword, famine, noisome beasts, which are evil beasts, and the pestilence to cut off from it man and beast. It's to make the land desolate. It's to, and we're gonna look at this in a future study, it's to, make, to allow the land to enjoy its Sabbaths. But this is what happens to the church. It becomes desolate during the Great Tribulation because of false teaching and all type of hazards that are around. And we see this also talked about in the famous Olivet Discourse, the Great Tribulation passage in the New Testament. For example, Luke 21, 20, when you shall see Jerusalem, which again is a symbol for the church, compassed with armies, uh, symbolized by Babylon, then know that the desolation thereof is nigh. So let's move on in our study and look at these a little bit more. But we see that there's a, a remnant. There's always a true remnant. The church today is huge, but there's still a true remnant of, of, of true Christians that love the Lord Jesus Christ. And we see that symbolized Noah, Daniel, and Job, they were a type of that church remnant. Because later in Ezekiel 14 we read, Yet behold, therein shall be left a remnant that shall be brought forth, both sons and daughters, true children of God. Behold, they shall come forth unto you, and you shall see their way and their doings. And you shall be comforted concerning the evil that I have brought upon Jerusalem. And you sh shall know that I have not done without cause all that I have done in it, says the Lord. But the remnant will be brought out of it, will be brought through. Just as when the great tribulation happens, the true Christians are there. They're persecuted they're with the sword. There's famine. There's evil beasts all around them. And there's pestilence all around them. Yet they'll be delivered. These four sword judgments result in killing during the great tribulation. But we're going to find that that killing is a spiritual killing. It's a symbolic killing of the true Christians. Consider Matthew 24. They shall deliver you up to be afflicted, which is the great tribulation. And this is the Olivet Discourse. And shall kill you. 
You shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. And then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. When we see in the Bible, most of prophecy is, is written symbolically. The whole book of Revelation, Daniel, it's, it's mostly in symbolic language all through the Old Testament prophets. And we see several places that killing Christians die daily. We, 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 we lay down our altar on the altar of service daily. 1 John 3.15, whoever hates his brother is a murderer. It's not a real murderer, but if you just hate somebody, it's like you kill them because you, you take them out of your life, you put them aside, you, you consider that they don't exist. Matthew 5, you've heard that it was said of all time, thou shall not kill, and whoever so shall kill shall be in danger of judgment. But I say to you, whoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. We see in the Bible, Christians are, are, are laid down on the altar of service, and that's the killing that's talked about in prophecy. Okay, so let's move on to the first of the sore judgments, and that is famine. Ezekiel 14, 13, when the land sins against me by trespassing grievously. And we know that's what the Babylonian captivity and the Great Tribulation are all about. About lawlessness, about the worship of other gods and idols. Today it's, it's in the form of materialism and our things and our achievements. And uh, God will stretch out his hand upon it and break the staff of the bread thereof. And send famine upon it and will cut off man and beast. And we know that the bread of life for a Christian is the Lord Jesus Christ. He's our bread of life. He's the word of God. And there, but there's famine. There's famine in the land. Where is the word of God? Where is the focus on Christ in the church? And we see that the famines are talked about in the Olivet Discourse, which is the Great Tribulation, that there will be famines, Matthew 24, 7. But let's go on and look at the important symbolic spiritual meaning of famine. Okay, it's the scarcity of Bible study and, and, and respect for the Bible and the authoritative nature of the Bible. We see in Deuteronomy 8.3, which is uh, quoted in Matthew 4.4, 4, man does not live by bread alone, that's physical bread, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That's the bread that we need, it's the, the word of God. It's the bread that sustains us and nourishes us spiritually. And we know that bread is the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's the word of God. For example, Amos 8, 11, and 12, a very important defining passage. Behold, the days come, says the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land. This is the famine that's what's, what's being talked about. Not a famine of bread, literal bread, nor a thirst for physical water, but of the hearing of the words of the Lord. That's the big issue. It, it's, it's about the... The word of God is the, the bread that we must live by day to day. That's more important. And that's what the famine is all about. And they shall wander from sea to sea. And from north even to the east, they shall run to and fro and seek the word of the Lord. People are looking for the word of, the, the word of God. But it's right here. It's right in the Bible. It's right in the Bible. And they don't find it, though, because they're, 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 they're following other gospels and other false teachings that are in the church. Okay, so let's move on to the second sword judgment. For the first one was the lack of Bible teaching, of actually people understanding the Bible. The second sword judgment are evil beasts. And we normally would think about, well, lions and tigers and bears. But, but so let's look at the passage. If I cause noisome or evil beasts to pass through the land and they spoil it so it'd be desolate, Lions and t ferocious animals will displace people. People will leave. They'll they'll run or they'll be killed by them. Um, and we the word noise in there, by the way, is literally the word evil in the Hebrew. And we see beasts there. Literally, it's the word that means anything living. So it's a living. It's an evil thing that's living. And we find that word occurs more than 500 times in the Old Testament. It just simply means something that's living. So let's look a little bit deeper at what are the even, evil living things. Okay, and when we look at the evil beasts, we find that Satan, the Antichrist, Satan's ministers in the church are all referred to as evil beasts. Uh, for example, Satan is a serpent. Serpent in the Bible in Genesis is, is called a, a beast. He's more subtle. The serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. The serpent is just an example of something that's living, but it portrays Satan, his subtlety. 
The Antichrist is a beast in Revelation 13, a beast like a leopard, and, and his feet of a bear and his mouth like the mouth of a lion. And the dragon, which again, that's a picture of Satan, gave him his power, all beasts. They're evil beasts. And we also look on beyond that, Satan's ministers in the church, Matthew 7, 15. Beware of false prophets, which to you, which to you in sheep's clothing, they look like they're, they're sheep, but inwardly they're ravening wolves. They're an evil beast. False prophets are evil beasts. False ministers in the church. False teachers. People that are, are merchandise in the church. They're trying to get their personal gain. They're trying to keep everybody happy. They're trying to gr create a mega church. All those are people that are, are compromising the word of God. Go your ways, behold, I send you forth as lamb amongst wolves. We as Christians live amongst wolves. There's people that look righteous on the outside, but they're not. Okay, we, we just to review quickly the evil beasts of prophecy. And we talked a little bit about this already, but dr a dragon represents Satan. The terrible beast in Daniel 7, which is a, a type of the Antichrist, the little horn. The he-goat, which is Greece, but the little horn is the Antichrist. All these are beasts, represent, represent as beasts. A beast is a leopard. We just looked at Revelation 13. And the beast of two horns is a false prophet in Revelation 13, which includes church leadership. So we see that evil beasts are those people that are out to harm us. It's a spiritual battle. Who's trying to take the word of God away from us? Who's perverting the word of God? Who's teaching us false prophecy? Those are the evil beasts that are, are, are abound during the Great Tribulation at the end of the church age. Okay, so let's move on to the third sword judgment, sword. So normally we think about a sword, it's people out there physically killing each other, but the, the sword is used symbolically in the Bible. So here's the passage, of Ezekiel 14, 17, or if I bring a sword upon that land and say, sword, go through the land, that I cut off man and beast from it. Again, it either drives people away or it kills them. So let's look at a little bit more at the sword. Okay, so first we know that the sword is, is a representation of the word of God. Very clearly, Ephesians six seventeen, the whole armor of God. And take up the sword of the Spirit, which is none other than the Word of God. It's our tool. That we, we don't fight physically with that sword. It's a spiritual battle. We're battling spiritually. The Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword. So there's other swords out there. There's false teaching as a sword, false philosophies as a sword. All type of uh, belief systems are, are a sword, but we have the true sword, which is the word of God. Okay, so the sword represents spiritual warfare, and it's all around the Bible. It's all about what's truth. Jesus, when he stood in front of Pilate, Pilate said, what is truth? And Jesus is the truth. He's the way, the truth, and the life. He's the bread of God. He's the, the word of God that we live daily by. And we see Revelation 6, 4, again, a, a time uh, that's, that talks about things that are in the church age. And there was another horse that was red, and the power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth. And that's a picture of Satan as he sends out, he goes out for spiritual battle, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. So not only the good guys have swords, but the bad guys do too. And there's a spiritual battle going on. And the grand battle, again, is a spiritual battle. Back to Luke 21, which is the Olivet Discourse, which discusses the Great Tribulation. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword. Christians are, are, are battling and they're struggling because, because all around them is false teaching. And the leaders of the church are not teaching the truth of the Bible. And they shall be led away captive. They're led, led away captive into all the nations. And Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. That's what the Great Tribulation is like. It's about killing with the sword. It's about spiritually putting people down and, and, and teaching them wrong things. Okay, and we also see the sword is associated with the Antichrist of Revelation 13. We recall that beast like a, a leopard, who the dragon, who Satan gave him his power, his throne or seat, and great authority. And in verse 7, the, the Antichrist goes out there specifically to make war with the saints, the true Christians, and to overcome them. And how does he do that in the church? He takes people captive. He makes them 
quiet. They have to endure listening to things that are wrong. Or they get scattered and they have to leave churches in search of the Word of God. Or they get spiritually killed because they're given, given false doctrine and false, uh, false gospels. But Revelation 13.10, we see that he that leads into captivity, which is the Antichrist, taken Jerusalem, trodden down, taken captive, the, and the true Christians are stuck in these churches that are, that are pursuing the wrong thing and they're worshiping and condoning the worship of gods and idols, shall go into captivity. That, that, that Antichrist will go into captivity. And he, the Antichrist that kills with the sword, must be killed with the sword as well. Ultimately, there's a spiritual battle when Christ returns. He's got, he's got the sword, the ultimate sword that comes out of his mouth. He's got the ultimate judgment. And, and, and Satan, the Antichrist, and, and all the false ministers will be judged. And it's a call for patience and the faith of the saints. Okay, so let's move on. So we're getting a glimpse. Ezekiel 14 is just pointing to the conditions that occurred in Judah, but they also are a, a, the conditions that will occur at the end time church. The final judgment is pestilence. Or if I send a pestilence into that land and pour out my f fury upon it in blood to cut off from it man and beast. Pestilence is a disease. It's a plague. It's something that's going to cause death and sickness and suffering. So let's look at what the, what the pestilence symbolically means. Okay, and we also see that there will be pestilence during the Great Tribulation. For example, Matthew 24, 7, For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. That's the spiritual warfare. There should be famines. That's the lack of hearing the word of God. And pestilences. And earthquakes in diverse places, earthquakes of judgments, but pestilences. There's going to be plagues and sicknesses. And we see in Leviticus 26, which was one of the earliest prophecies in the Bible, I will bring a sword upon you that shall avenge the quarrel of my covenant. And when you are gathered together within your cities, I will send a pest pestilence among you. And you should be delivered into the hand of the enemy. And that's exactly what happened during the Babylonian captivity. And it's exactly what's going to happen during the Great Tribulation. The pestilence is in the church. It's in the church. So now we have to understand what pestilence represents in the Bible. And it's the disease of sin. It's very clear. There's many passages. And we, on our website, we go through all of these four judgments in much more detail. www.therockofoffense.com but let's look at Isaiah chapter 1. Ah, sinful nation, talking about Israel, a people laden with iniquity, a seed of evildoers, children that are corruptors. They have forsaken the Lord. They have provoked the Holy One of Israel unto anger. They are gone away backward. Why should you be stricken any more? Ye will revolt more and more. The whole head is sick, and the whole heart faint. Disease, pestilence, they're sick. They're spiritually sick from the sole of the foot, even to the head. There is no soundness, and that word soundness really means health. There's no health in it, but wounds and bruises and putrid sores. They have a horrible disease. They have not been closed, neither bound up, neither mollified with ointment. And it, it, your country is desolate. Your cities are burned with fire. Your land, strangers devour it in your presence, and it is desolate as overthrown by strangers. Except the Lord of hosts had left unto us a very small remnant, we should have been as Sodom and we should have been like unto Gomorrah. There's that remnant concept. Even though the, 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 the church becomes putrid with, with disease and with sickness, the whole thing is sick because of, of sin. It's the sickness of sin. It's because they're laden, laden with iniquity, Isaiah 1.4. They're following other gods and, and idols. They're, they're, they're breaking the commandments. They're condoning people that, that worship other gods and idols and they welcome them in the church and it's okay. So that's the disease that is pestilence. So we see many other places in the Bible, and again, our website covers this in more detail. For example, hope deferred makes the heart sick. Shepherds of Israel did not heal the sick or diseased. There's no salvation. People would sin. To be sick and diseased is a symbolic reference to be sin. We talked about Isaiah 1, and healing is needed. And we see all type of examples of healing, about healing disease, Exodus 15, heal the brokenhearted, Psalm 147, 
heal one the people's iniquity psalm 103 and isaiah 57 heal sin psalm 41 4 unfaithfulness there's many passages that talk about healing of the sickness of sin and that, that's 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 what it is like to be unsaved so we see that the fourth judgment is pestilence okay so just a quick summary of the four sore judgments it's the condition of the church during the great tribulation famine lack of faithful bible te bible teaching la the word of god is no longer central in the, in the church evil beast the church is overrun with those that are, are are bringing a different type of gospel false prophets false teaching in the church i'm okay you're okay uh, they're condoning condoning all type of sinful behavior including the worship of other gods and idols a sword there's a spiritual battle against the word of god it, it's bringing all the other type of ideas and false teaching into the church uh pestilence the sin and lawlessness and we see the, lawlessness is talked about in many other passages that talk about the great tribulation including second Thessalonians chapter two okay so that's that's the study on those four sore judgments we're going to look next video at the siege of jerusalem and again jerusalem represents the church and we're going to look at what the siege means you're not going to want to miss that study please consider subscribing thank you very much for watching this video